What's going on guys? Welcome to another 2021 NBA Draft Prospect full game video breakdown. My name is Bobby Douglas and today we're going to be taking a look at the widely presumed to be number one overall draft pick in this year's draft, Cade Cunningham from Oklahoma State. You guys have all heard about him. Don't really think he needs an introduction other than the fact that he is the number one player on my board as well as many other boards across um, NBA Draft scouting land. So not much else I have to say about him. Let's just watch him play. This is the uh, Big 12 tournament game against Baylor, where he's going to have 25 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists. Um, yeah, so very fun game for him. Let's watch him play. I'm excited. So again, if you guys don't know, number 2 in the black. I'm pretty sure everyone knows. Uh, yes, Cade Cunningham. I feel like, you know, I didn't even... I have notes here. Like, you know, I'm sure you can see him. But, um... I honestly feel like I don't even need him just because he's so I've watched him play probably almost every single game of his college career. Um, you know, six eight lead guard, jumbo size playmaker, you know, draws comparisons to Luka Doncic. Um offensively, he is probably one of the most complete players in the draft. You can see him right there using that pick and roll. Not much going on there, but just overall, just the skill set with Cade, it's perfect for the modern NBA. Um, he has so much going for him in terms of his size, his IQ, scoring chops, just everything um, is just right uh, right timing for him in terms of the NBA. And he is, for me, um, pretty much unquestionably the number one overall draft pick uh, on my board. And so that's just... Um, my take, I think probably on 95% of draft boards, he'll be the number one prospect. Recently interviewed on JJ Reddick's podcast. If you guys haven't listened to that, I highly recommend it. There's some good stuff there. Um, but yeah, we'll watch him play. Um, again, here he is using the ball screen. Basically did everything for Oklahoma State this year. Averaged 20 points a game along with uh, six rebounds and three and a half assists. Um, you know, was pretty much thrown into a pretty dire situation this Oklahoma State team wasn't probably a tournament team without him um you know obviously you had the at the beginning of the year you had the postseason ban that ultimately you know the appeal never really got settled so therefore they were allowed to compete this year in the NCAA tournament they ultimately lost in the second round but um you know you had all that you didn't know if he was going to end up staying at Oklahoma State once that ban was announced the, um, the G League I think he listened to an offer from them Ultimately decides to go to Oklahoma State play for his brother and um, uh, the head coach. I think his name is, uh, why am I blanking on the head coach's name for Oklahoma State? Mike Boynton. For Mike Boynton and his brother Cannon, you can see right here, again, really good at just kind of, again, right here, that's just a crazy pass. Again, pretty off balance, but he's getting trapped in that corner. And there's a three for Cunningham. He's going to miss that one, but again, smooth, easy stroke, can shoot off the dribble. Everything you really want, he kind of has. And yeah, I, I made a video on him, him specifically, I believe in, I want to say uh, January as Jared Butler gets to the lane. And I was basically saying like, yes, this guy is, if you draft him, he is going to be your franchise. Um, and I still stand by that. I think he is probably the most highly rated number one prospect I've had probably since Zion, which, you know, isn't saying much. Um, I don't think he's as good of a prospect as Zion was, but I think he's right there. Definitely um, would have gone first overall in 2020, um, as would a few of these guys. But um, Cade is probably the best prospect in the last two years. And again, just everything that the modern NBA wants. And so that's kind of just the perfect fit. He fits into any roster, um, you know, because he can play one, he can play on the wing, Um he just does so many things well as you see him kind of cut off that back door cut by Macy Oteague. And again, he hasn't really done much yet. No, we haven't seen a whole lot from him. But he's going to play basically the entire game. 38 minutes in this one. He gets in a little bit of foul trouble, which was a constant issue with him. He always got into early foul trouble in the first half. And it got annoyed. It got super annoying as a fan and kind of just like a draft guy because like you get roped in, into watching all these Oklahoma State games without Cade, and you're just kind of like, all right, well, that's, you know, not as fun as it would have been with Cade. But, you know, there were some good pieces on this team, especially later on in the year. Avery Anderson is a guy that really stepped up late. The Boone twins were both really good. Um, Ice Likely, obviously, has been a guy who's been there for a few years. So they had some talent around him, but obviously Cade was kind of just the engine that made this team go. Um, they ended up getting a five seed in the NCAA tournament. They probably would have been a play-in team if that without Cade, and so for a freshman to kind of have that uh, maturity and that responsibility, I think that says a lot about him, 
And again, he was basically just the entire team's offense. Everything pretty much ran through him. Very similar to what we see with uh, Luka Doncic in Dallas. So, you know, that's where those comparisons kind of come from. Obviously, I think Luka was kind of looking back on it. He was just kind of like a generational, like Michael Jordan level talent, right? And so I'm not going to put Cade necessarily in that Luka tier just yet. But in terms of like what they do and what they do on a basketball court, I think, um, you know, Cade's very similar to Luka and how they both play. You can see Oklahoma State's kind of in this zone. They did a lot of zone this year, um, and Cade would usually be on the backside. So if it looks like he's missing backdoor cutters and things like that, just remember that. Um, you know, it's kind of a scheme thing more than the Cade Cunningham thing. He's very good off the ball defensively, um, you know, very high IQ player. So I don't really have any issues with that whatsoever. See right there, it looks like it's going to be uh, Oklahoma State ball. And again, Cade just kind of rotating along with the ball, you know, very engaged. Right here, he's going to sink down. He actually kind of bangs with uh, Jonathan Shama Chachua. And he's going to force that turnover as we hit our first media timeout. Damn, I, it feels like I've been talking for 30 seconds. Just the amount of things I could say about Cade Cunningham, man. I've known about him probably since his junior year in high school. Um, I think Ricky O'Donnell from SB Nation did a big story on him as we get a turnover right there. Almost a turnover. Um, and I was just like, okay, this guy actually could be pretty good. You know, he's like, you know, 6'8". He can handle the ball well. Everything's kind of moving his way. Obviously, he had the Mount Verde teams in high school where he was a pretty much a you know the best player on the best team high school basketball scene in the last 20 years. Right there, it's going to get that offensive foul call. Um, one thing that I will say about Cade, you know, I haven't really done a whole lot of analysis yet, but he hasn't really done much. But right here, he's going to get Davion Mitchell. Hey, Davion Mitchell is going to draw this charge. Um, you know, Cade, his handle isn't good right now. Um, I would say it's pretty average. If he wants to be like a you know uh, an initiator at the next level, he really needs to you know, work on that handle, trying to break down defenders. Right now, he dribbles it way too close to his body. Um, and right here, he just kind of gets sped up a little bit. And he just kind of gives Davion that shoulder nudge. Um, I mentioned this in my video on him in January as well. But one thing, Cade Cunningham does kind of remind me of Wisconsin basketball. In a sense where if he's not playing at a certain pace, he kind of can look out of control at times, right? And so with, with Wisconsin basketball, they are notorious for playing super slow, super in control, things like that. And so, you know, when the pace kind of gets out of hand a little bit or it gets faster, Wisconsin basketball doesn't become Wisconsin basketball. As we see Kay, let's see what he does here. Again, really nice job just using that um, elongated step through the lane and finishing over Jared Butler. And this is kind of just like the advanced and the polished finishing that he does possess. He's able to just kind of glide to the basket and finish over the top and just smoothly lay it in. That that's pretty polished stuff. He wasn't a great finisher at the rim, but again, I think that that's more of an indication of like the poor spacing, the lane being clogged around him when he's going up for shots. So I'm not really worried about um, his at the rim numbers, as we see. I believe Oklahoma State got another, drew another foul here. But um, again, like if he he can get sped up at times, usually he's a very good job. He does a very good job of kind of just like controlling the pace and. Um, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, dictating the style of which the game is played. But sometimes if he's going up a guy like against Davion Mitchell, right, he tends to get a little bit sped up, leads to some of avoidable turnovers, right? But um, right here, you can just see kind of just the vision he has, right? So he's going to be on Davion, or Davion's going to be on him. Notices that there's not really going to be a driving lane here. He's going to spin and kick out, and then it's going to lead to an open three. Matt Meyer caught sleeping, as I talked about in the Davion Mitchell video. Just one of the most infuriating prospects defensively that I will evaluate this year. Um, but that's another video for another day. You can see Oklahoma State back into the zone. You can see Kate Cunningham calling out switches, you know, you know, uh, doing things with coverages, things like that. Again, he stunts, he recovers, he boxes out, and here he is in transition again. Right there, he's going to pull up for three, and he's going to knock that one down. And this is just kind of like classic Cade Cunningham. He wasn't really known as a scorer coming out of high school, which I think makes his 20 points a game even more impressive because I think he was playing a little bit out of his comfort zone um, as a freshman. But you could tell, like, he was one of the, he was the best player on this team, so they needed him to score, right? Um, at Mount Verde, he, wasn't, he was a good scorer, but obviously not really asked to do that a whole lot as much as play make and, and create for others. But um, right here, just kind of in transition, walk up three. Again, he has that 6'8 frame. He's, a lot, he's able to just kind of pull up, rise and fire over smaller defenders like Davion Mitchell. And you can see he's pretty pumped up about it as well. Um, you know, just very just effort. Again, we talked about with Book Knight earlier today, just the effortlessness of, at which he scores. Um, I think Cade does have a little bit of that. And so right here, we're going to get a turnover, travel something. Okay, here we go. 
And again, it's going to be a four on two. Let's see what happens here. Davion, really nice take there. And again, Oklahoma State, they really wanted to get Baylor up and running the floor. Um, this was kind of their game plan going in. It's going to be a huge, uh, huge talking point among the announcers in this game as well, that Oklahoma State is just trying to run. Um, Baylor, obviously not in good condition at this point. They just recently have gotten back from their COVID pause, haven't really had a chance to practice, things like that. So Oklahoma State's really trying to push the pace of this game. And Cade Cunningham's a big part of that as Davion Mitchell finishes with that nice uh, layup over Cunningham. Not much he could have done there. He was a secondary defender. Um, but yeah, that was a key uh, strategic talking point uh, for Oklahoma State in this pregame. And it ultimately is going to pay off for them as they end up beating Baylor, giving them their second and final loss of the year before they ended up winning the national championship. We got a turnover here. So Cade's going to be on Macy Oteague. Uh, Baylor found a lot of success putting Davion on Cade uh, on the defensive end. Uh, you can see him right there kind of calling out switches. Again, kind of right here, he kind of gets a little bit lost. Um, so right there, he's kind of, you know, he Mark Vidal kind of has a nice little open post up. Again, he kind of gets caught almost man-watching here, kind of too worried about the off-ball switching in the zone. Um, and right here, he's just not really in good position. Offers a decent contest, but not much really going on there. And again, that's not really his game. He can do that. He can defend in the post against guys like Mark Vidal, but um, he's better on the wings and just kind of communicating right there. Again, he misses this shot, but just the effortlessness, right? The behind the back, step back to the left, and um, you know he misses the shot, but again, he does have that shot in his bag, which is something that's super crucial um, for a guy like a jumbo size creator like Cade to really have. And so he's comfortable doing that. And again, he grew throughout the year so much as well, you know, just in terms of like his confidence scoring the ball and just being a team leader. You know, these guys, it was kind of like a Sharif Cooper thing. We talked about that in the first breakdown where, you know, Sharif Cooper only played 12 games and he was only a freshman, but he really kind of commanded the leadership uh, role for that Auburn team. And it's kind of the same thing with Oklahoma State. They kind of look to Kate, um, you know, to set the tone defensively offensively really carry them at some times during games and so that's not an easy thing for a freshman straight out of high school to do but you know Cade is kind of just mature by, beyond his years and um right oh they had him open for a kick out three he was just kind of able to guide this Oklahoma State team to probably a season result that would have exceeded um most people's expectations um regardless of the postseason ban um Let's see what Vital does there. It's going to be a turnover. Again, Cade kind of going for that loose ball, but then he's, looks how he's, he's kind of like just face guarding Jared Butler, which I appreciate the commitment to that. Um, not letting him really touch the ball. And here he is again, again, right up the floor. So right there, he does have a tendency to kind of force passes into tight windows. Um, right here, maybe could have waited an extra second before firing this pass. Overall, I like the read, but you can see he doesn't really have enough separation yet. If he waits like a second, I think he probably has a little bit more of an opening. But you can see just kind of the timing was off, and that was kind of a common theme for him. He averaged four turnovers this year. But again, that's obviously with, you know, him having to, having to you know, do everything for this team. And so, um, you know, it's just kind of one of those things where you have to kind of take the good with the bad. And for Cade, the good clearly outweighed the bad. Um you know, just kind of the turnovers a little bit uh, got a bit much. I think in this game he's going to have three. Or, yeah, he'll have three turnovers in this game. Um, but, again, average four for the year. And here comes Oklahoma State. You can see him running the floor. It's a good take by, I think that's Rondell Walker for the Cowboys. But just the overall, just like maturity and like the kind of the basketball wisdom that Cade does have, I think that adds to it. Obviously, on the court, in terms of his basketball skills, he's just really good. And that's why that makes him a number one pick. But then you add in all the off court stuff that he does, and he's like really, you know, a good leader, a good teammate. You know, that's all really, really impressive stuff. So that's just, you know, add it like just kind of the icing on the cake in a way, you know? Um,. So yeah, I'm just I'm pretty much all in on Cunningham um, as a number one guy in this year's class. Um, some guys will will see him as kind of like a oh, underwhelming number one prospect just because he doesn't really have that you know 
groundbreaking athleticism, but in terms of just like basketball IQ, and we've seen like with guys like Luca and James Harden that like you don't really need like you know blistering speed or just like super high verticals to really be an effective basketball player and just like an all NBA level player. Um, if anything, it's not about raw speed as much as it is about change of speed and change of pace and deception, right? And that's what makes Luka Doncic so good. And I think the similar thing is for Cunningham too, as you can see right here, he's going to grab this rebound. Very underrated rebounder for his, um, just like, it's something with K that doesn't really get talked about a whole lot. Right here, he's going to grab this rebound, sky for it, get it with one hand, and immediately he's going to fire it out on the break. Um, very good rebounder. He hustles, he gets loose balls, things like that. But on the glass, he's pretty effective, and he averaged around uh, six a game. And so that's very good for somebody who would be guarding people on the you know perimeter a whole lot. It's right there, it's a little bit of a somehow, somehow that pass still manages to get through and it's an air ball. Okay, yeah. And so that's kind of an example of the type of players that Cunningham was working with a little bit. You know, like some people, like these players weren't really reliable from three, right? And the NBA is going to have much better teammates, obviously. You can see right here, decent contest, but Macy O.T. is one of the best, you know, float game type of players in the class. So not much you could have done there. Um, but again, just like in the NBA, he'll be playing with, you know, really good shooters, things like that. And that'll help him a lot moving forward. See right there, another one of his weaknesses, just kind of, you know, we obviously I just m mentioned how the athleticism isn't like an end all be all in the modern NBA, but it would be nice to have. Um, right here, you can see Flo Thamba just kind of swallows Kate up whole. And again, he's 6'8", tries to glide to the rim, can't really get anything going. Flo is going to block, block him. He does have a little bit of vertical pop. Like, he can finish above the rim, but for a 6'8 guy, you'd think he'd be a little bit more athletic. Um, and he just kind of isn't. He's more comfortable just kind of playing a little bit slower, a little bit behind, using, you know, uh, finesse rather than power. And, um, you know, so that's just kind of like the Cade Cunningham just kind of style of play. Um, if, he, if you get him in the open floor, though, like he can definitely, you know, finish with the best of them right there. He's going to miss a three out of a catch and shoot opportunity from an inbound pass. And you can see right now back into that zone. You can see Kate's kind of just like barking at somebody to get Macy O.T. got there. But um, that's just kind of the style, just not the fastest, not the most athletic, but just one of the smartest very good feel for the game, you know, good passer, good finisher, can shoot, can score at all three levels, and obviously that size at 6'8 makes him almost devastating um, if you're a defending team trying to stop Cade, um, so just too many things to like, you know, and obviously the athleticism is something that'll get talked about probably more than it should, um, and so I just kind of want to like drive that home uh, right there, decent job kind of staying attached, but he kind of loses Davion, good block by a uh, one of the Boone brothers, and again, really nice pass from Cunningham. Going to end with a dunk. Again, just grab the rebound, and we talked about this too um, with some other guys, but Cade can actually do it because he's a point guard. Going to grab this rebound right here and immediately sees Rondell Walker streaking, delivers a perfect pass right on the money for an easy dunk in transition. So again, kind of like that, you know, that play was kind of reminiscent of like the Lomelo Ball, Lonzo Ball, Chino Hill scenes where they're just kind of launching full court passes, you know. Um, Cade has that. Again, eyes are always up, uh, looking for open teammates, looking for streaking teammates down the lane, in the corners. Uh, we haven't seen much of him in pick and roll yet, um, just in terms of like, uh, you know, passing or just kind of creating. But I assure you he can do that all very well too. He snakes ball screens really well. You know, he can score, he can pull up right there. Good contest from Teague. Um, and again, you can see Oklahoma State's trying to run again. So here he is in a ball screen. Looks like, again, that's right on cue. Right fucking on cue. Holy shit. Again, so we always talk about, I don't always talk about this, but if you're paying attention in the NBA, you know, if you're looking at like pick and roll things, right? The way the, the NBA defense is set to play is that this guy, so in this case, Jared Butler, he's supposed to be tagging the roller, right? So in this case, the roller would be the Boone brother right here. Which means that this cross-court pass to the corner would always be your best option and it could get you an open look, right? And so the key thing, especially in the last few years, is when evaluating point guards, is can the point guard come off a ball screen and deliver that cross-court pass going either way, right? So for an example, Killian Hayes last year, right? When we were talking about him, if you guys remember, he was a good prospect. I liked him. I think I had him fifth on my board. 
but he had no right hand, like at all, no right hand. So what would happen is that he would go left all the time and defense would just, would just force him to go right. And he couldn't make any passes going to his right. Cade, on the other hand, he's a righty. Watch what he does here with his left hand. Boom. Right there to that corner with his left hand, cross court. That's, that's the pass. That is the money pass. Probably one of the most important passes a point guard in the NBA needs to master is that cross court skip pass out of a pick and roll. Cade just delivered an absolute rope to that corner. That's the mark of a true, truly ready uh, point guard prospect, in my view. If you can make that pass and pick and roll, right there, another really good pass into the post, putting it where only his man can get it. Two back-to-back -back very good passes for Cunningham right there. And that, my friends, is the Cunningham difference. Not everybody can make those two passes. He just made both of those really easily. Number one player on the board. And he's only scored five points so far, so that's something too. So you can see him now on Matt Meyer, and again, I just like how he's just kind of tagging that little slip screen. You can see Oklahoma State's going to get this ball back. Again, Cade in transition, not much going on. It was funny watching Oklahoma State though games, though, because you were just kind of like, um, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Kicking and Screaming with Will Ferrell. Probably one of my favorite movies of all time. But there's a legendary scene where like Will Ferrell's just drawing on a whiteboard saying, like, get the ball to the Italians, right? It was kind of like a similar thing with Kate Cunningham. You just wanted to, like, you know, plaster something on a giant billboard across town saying, like, get the damn ball to Kate Cunningham, right? And then sometimes it just didn't work out. Like, <laughs> um, But it was just similar to that, where you kind of just felt safer with the ball in Cunningham's hands than anybody else's. Um, and you can say that for a lot of star players in college and in the NBA, but with Cade and just kind of just like the, um, just kind of the nature of this Oklahoma State roster, it was almost doubly true in the sense where it's like Cade Cunningham really just needed the ball at almost all times, it, feel, it felt like. And um, yeah, he just, everything ran through him. And so it was just so much of a difference making situation right there again. Again, we've seen a lot of good passing. In the second half, we'll probably see a more scoring. But again, right here, he's going to come off this little Iverson screen, get the ball, go to the baseline. And again, classic Baylor, no middle. They're helping. Cade Cunningham immediately sees this guy wide open. Matt Myers late to tag, right? And again, he's going to find him right there. Good, again, just, ugh, you know, it's a great pass, not a good finish. See Davion right there. We got a foul. Who did we get the foul on? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, it was on Kate on the push. That's bullshit. That is such bullshit. I forgot about this. Right, okay. So now he has two fouls, and he's out for maybe a minute. And this is what I meant. So many times, so many times this year, he'd get in foul trouble early. It was just so irritating to watch. Um, give me one second here. So he's in in about at 23.52, so I'll skip ahead. So there we go. And then he's in for about two minutes here, and he comes out at like the minute 10 mark for the rest of the half. So then I will pause that video, or pause this video and go on to the second half. So Cade, so right now, I actually, just one thing of note, just for Baylor's purposes, um, I actually thought Baylor did the best job defending Cade when Jonathan Chamwa Chachua was on him, right? Just giving him that length, that foot speed that Chamwa Chachua does have. I thought that, that was Baylor's most effective strategy against Cunningham um, based on the three games I saw, or two games where he played. Um, but they often went to Davion. Obviously not a bad choice either, but um, just something I thought I'd mention. But you can see now he's back onto Davion, or Davion's back onto him. And there's Cunningham again, weak side. So right there, totally lets that cutter go back. But again, I think it's because Oklahoma State's in this zone, right? So you can kind of see, you know, Boone's pretty high up there. So again, Maceo's kind of just slipping through the cracks. You know, Cade should be a little bit more watchful there, but again, I do think it's more of a scheme thing. And then you'll see it right here. He somehow manages to get this loose ball, right? And it's immediately a look ahead into a two-on-one situation. Easy layup for Oklahoma State, right? Again, we talked about it earlier, how Oklahoma State wanted to get out and run in this game. And you can see you can see it right now. Baylor just can't get back on defense. And it's Cade Cunningham getting the ball, looking ahead, and t creating advantages for his teammates to, uh, to succeed on, you know? And so, you know, Cade Cunningham, 
didn't really have a direct role in terms of like the assist and basket, but he did set that entire play up, right? He got the hockey assist there. And so you kind of have to watch the little things. You can't really look at the assist with Cunningham because, you know, a lot of potential assists would be wiped out because his teammates couldn't make shots. Again, only three and a half assists doesn't really tell the entire story. Um, and so maybe like you look at it and like, oh shit, he has like a turnover, uh, you know, uh, what is it? A assist to turnover ratio of less than one, which is usually not a good sign. But with Cunningham, you almost have to look at like a potential assist to turnover ratio. And in that case, I would say it's probably more like two to one because I think he's probably creating eight to nine chances a game with his passing, right? And it just happens that, you know, teammates aren't making shots, things like that. So, again, you can see he's playing very high up on the wings. And you can see he's kind of on Macy OT. It looks like they're in a man to man. Davion right there with his patented left handed scoop shot. And this is another thing, too, with Cade, that sometimes he would get a little bit too passive. Let's see what he does here first before I say anything too stupid. No, nothing much going on. But um, he would be somewhat passive in the first half, and then in the second half, he would kind of turn on the Jets in terms of scoring the ball. It was kind of like in the first half, he was trying to, you know, you know, maybe get other teammates involved, things like that. And then in the second half, he just kind of flipped a switch where he just became this alpha scorer, right? And so that's just something to keep in mind, too, with uh, some of this stuff. Because if it looks like he's being a little bit too uh, passive or not really looking, hunting his own shot, I assure you in the second half, it's a lot more, you know, aggressive Cade. And if you want any, you know, further evidence of that, uh, this game is online too, the Oklahoma State-Oklahoma game. I just want to see this pass again. So Cade, again, just finding the, really good at finding the pocket, right? So right here, he's just going to kind of get around Butler, right? And he's just able to make that pocket pass. And that obviously leads to a two-on-one situation for another layup. Again, another hockey assist right here. Mark Vidal gets caught sleeping. Very bad defensive effort by Mark Vidal right there. But, um, you know, again, Cade's kind of setting that up. But, again, you know, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, I think it was in Norman. Cade Cunningham goes for 40. Um, probably one of the more ridiculous college performances I've seen. Right here, good job sticking with Jared Butler. Yeah, very nice job getting through that screen. It went under it, but um, was able to kind of evade Jonathan Chama Chachua, who I've talked about at length of how good of a screener he was. So good defensive possession by Cunningham right there. Ice likely can't finish it. And again, you can tell he's just screaming to come back. <laughs> we got a foul here. 49 seconds left. Third this is 27.52. I think he's out. So I just want to highlight one. Oh, no, no, no. We got one more possession with Caden. So right here, let's see what's going on. Because it looked like Cade was kind of pissed at likely. So again, right here, you can tell he's kind of upset. He's going to clap in his face a little bit. Right here, he's on, back on Jared Butler, kind of providing that switch and hard hedge. We got a jump ball. And right there, just can't get the transition pass. Not a great look um, in transition. Yeah, you can see, like, Kate's kind of like... So yeah, I just wanted you guys to see that exchange, right? Because we talked about how book night uh, yesterday and this morning, how, um, you know, like his body language wasn't always the best, right? And so Cade Cunningham, you can tell he's kind of getting heated with likely. They're just kind of having like a discussion. But I do kind of like how it's just kind of, you can tell both of them kind of know, like, you know, uh, their relationship. And so they're just kind of like talking, getting into a little bit of an argument. This isn't like a, a shoving match. It's more of just kind of like a intense teammate talk. Um, with book night, you would often see him kind of just like shrug his shoulders, put his head down, you know, like shrug in general. Right. And he wouldn't really be communicating after the fact you could tell Cade was kind of upset with likely, likely same thing with Cade, but you can tell that they're talking it out. Right. And so Cade having the confidence like that as a freshman to talk to likely who's been there for three years, you know, I think that kind of shows a lot, you know, maybe I'm reading too much into it. I probably am, but um, I just kind of think that leadership kind of shows up right there. So, um, with that, he is out for the remainder of the uh, first half, so I will end this video here. Stay tuned for the second half. A lot more scoring from Kate. I think he's going to drop a 20-piece in the second half, so that will be very fun to watch. Overall, though, thanks for watching. Again, thanks for your continued support of the channel. If you want to see the schedule for the remainder of the week, go to my Twitter, at BobbyDouglas21. That's the schedule um, up through Saturday, so um, stay tuned for that. Or don't stay tuned. You can tune into that on my Twitter. Excuse me. Um, overall, though, thanks for watching these videos. They're getting a lot more views recently, too, so... Really appreciate that. And yeah, if you want to see anybody next week, um, you know, please feel free to send over any recommendations. 
sticking trying to stick to like top 40, top 45 guys right now just because I want to get the more, you know, prevalent prospects out before the NBA draft. Um, but, you know, if you have any dark horses that you want me to take a look at in my free time and give you like a little feedback on, please feel free to. Um, but yeah, overall, thank you guys for watching and I will see you for part two coming up soon. Bye.